Hello, I'm Katie Cressel Maynard and I'm an engineer. Today I'm going to tell you the story of Pear the Polar Bear. Crash! Max peered timidly over the top of his duvet. Crash! Bang! Crash! Crash! What's that noise? Max's mum came rushing into his bedroom. Uh, I don't know, said Max. I, I think it's coming from outside. They slowly opened the curtains in Max's bedroom. It was still really dark outside, but the moon was out. It gave off just enough light so they could see a big, white, fluffy bottom sticking out of one of the bins at the bottom of the garden. Max looked at his mum. What is that? Together, they crept down the stairs, put on their coats, and as quietly as they could, they opened the back door. Munch, munch munch. They could hear the creature eating. Bravely, but still very slowly, they stepped out into the garden. Crack! Max's mum had trodden on a twig. Who's that? The creature looked around. Fish bones and chicken skin stuck out of its fur where its head had been buried in the bin. In two ginormous leaps, the creature was standing in front of Max and his mum. They could smell his stinky, fishy breath where he had been eating last night's leftover fish and chips and the remnants of the dog's dinner. Max looked nervously at his mum. Would this creature eat them too? Hello, the creature said. My name is Bear and I'm a polar bear. I've come from the Arctic Circle and I'm very hungry. Do you have any ice cream? Nervously, Max pointed through the back door to the freezer in the kitchen. Pear rushed past Max and his mum and made his way to the freezer. Finding a large tub labelled chocolate ice cream, he used his huge paw to rip off the lid and swallowed all the ice cream in one big gulp. Hmm, said Pear. Interesting flavour. Not as good as pickled fish, though. Pickled fish, said Max. Yuck, that sounds disgusting. Pear looked at the little boy. Disgusting? Have you ever tried it? Pickled fish ice cream is the most amazing ice cream in the whole world. In fact, we polar bears love it so much that we celebrate with the pickled fish ice cream party every year. I hope you don't mind me asking, said Max, but why are you in our back garden? It's a long way from the Arctic Circle. Pear sighed. My beautiful home is disappearing and we have no food, so I've had to move away. Oh, said Max. Why is it disappearing? Pear sighed again. It is disappearing because the ice is melting and with it everything I know of as home. I've just learnt about this at school, said Max. It's called climate change. To make energy, people have been using things called fossil fuels. This releases gases and causes the earth to warm up, melting the ice. Max imagined what it would feel like if his home melted. This made him sad. What if we could change how we make energy, said Max. We could help your home go back to how it was. And if we used less energy in the first place, it would make the job easier, said Max's mum. Pear looked up. A large grin spread across his face. I would like that very much. That night, Max's mum let Pear sleep in the dog's bed. The dog got an old blanket and kept one eye open all night, afraid that Pear might get hungry. Upstairs, Max couldn't sleep. His mind was racing with questions. Could he help Pear? He really wanted to, but it looked like it was going to be really hard. He needed a plan, a really big plan. Max! Max's mum shouted. What have you done to your bedroom? Max opened one sleepy eye and looked around. All over his bedroom walls were drawings and scribbles. He jumped up and ran downstairs. Pear, Pear, where are you? Hurry, we've got to get started. There's so much to do. It was Saturday and Max had been invited to his friend Izzy's birthday party at the local swimming pool. Pear had never been to a swimming pool before. Excited, he made a big splash when he jumped in and soaked Izzy's friends. Not everyone was happy about that, but they all listened to Pear's story and wanted to help. Finley said he would turn off the lights when they weren't needed. Freya said she would tell her parents to turn the heating down. Nigel said he would walk to school instead of going in the car. And Izzy promised to make a book of Pear's story so that even more people could hear it. 
Max and Pear went home feeling good. They danced around the kitchen table. They were excited that so many people wanted to help, but they knew it wasn't going to be enough. Max shared his worry with his mum. Maybe she could help him work it out. Max's mum smiled. It's just as well I'm an engineer, because tackling problems like this is exactly what engineers do. The next day, she took Max and Pear with her to work. It was a building full of engineers. Pear ate all the sandwiches. Not everyone was happy about that, but they all listened to Pear's story and wanted to help. The engineers looked at one another. The question Max had asked hung in the air. How can we make energy differently? Suddenly, the room was buzzing with action. Hurried conversations, scribbles on paper, drawings on the walls and calculations on the computers. The engineers worked and worked and worked on answering Max's question. It took a long time. But slowly, all over the world, more and more engineers started working on different ways to make energy. They built turbines to harness the power of the wind. They created machines that used the movement of ocean waves. They installed panels that collected the energy from the sun and they dug deep into the earth to use the heat of volcanoes. Pear lived with Max for all this time. He watched Max grow up and become an engineer as well. And finally, Pear's home in the Arctic Circle started to go back to how it was. Pear was now a very old bear with a wrinkly nose and worn out patches in his fur, but he was still excited to go home. Together, Max and Pear traveled north to the Arctic Circle it was cold, but Pear was right. It was beautiful. The snow and ice glistened and sparkled in the sunlight. Polar bears and their human friends were everywhere. Pear had an idea. It felt like just the right time for the biggest pickled fish ice cream party the polar bears had ever known. But after so long apart, the polar bears couldn't quite remember the recipe for the famous ice cream. So after a bit of experimentation, they managed it. And even Max had to admit that pickled fish ice cream tasted okay, if slightly odd. The party went on into the night. They danced, sang, laughed and hugged each other for as long as anyone could stay awake. Pear, said Max, can we stay friends? Even when I go home and we're far apart? Of course, said Pear. You've helped me get my home back. You're a true friend. You're welcome here anytime, and I'll be your friend forever.